on the other cell phone. <laughs> Oh, boy. Okay, once again, uh, the Donald on Saturday Night Live doing his version of Drake's Call Me on the Cell Phone. And uh, I don't know. I think his moves are pretty good. The voice, not so much. Barry Newsbaum is joining us, political analyst, to talk about this and some other things that are happening. Good morning. Good morning. Great to be you, here. Thank you for coming in on a Sunday morning. So let's talk. Uh, that's a jumping off point. Uh, okay. The Donald. Obviously, other presidential candidates have done this. I don't know, you know, looking back, whether it's hurt them or helped them. What do you think this is going to do for the Donald? You know, I got to be honest with you. First of all, like Elizabeth, I couldn't stay up. I got up this morning to watch it yeah. on DVR. Yeah. Uh, the segment that he did in the Oval Office, Dan, could not have been written better by his political campaign. Think about the questions. First of all, it was well done. Uh, your Mexico policy went great. Here comes the check from the Mexicans. China has backed down completely. Putin is afraid of you. Syria is now at peace. They went through every oh one my. of Trump's sometimes crazy predictions as if they've all come true. And that was a little tongue in cheek. You know, Ivanka was there and so on. But I got to be honest with you, that could not have been written better if it came out of the Trump campaign. Everything he promised has now come true in 2017. So, so they, I thought that was cute. They wrote his dream. They did. They, they did. His absolute dream. And wouldn't that be nice if all that was true? It'd be nice if it was true no matter who was president. That's exactly right. All right. So the Donald, let's talk about some of these polls right. that are coming out. And there's some new polls. And, you know, the pollers have been busy. Uh, the first one you wanted to talk about is who beats Hillary. Right. I think this is actually the most important poll because there's no question, Dan, it's going to be Hillary, right? Bernie Sanders is nothing more than a straw man. He gives Hillary the chance to practice. It gets her on the news. It gets her to show her policies. Bernie is so far to the left, he's lucky to stay on the planet. <laughs> It's no question Hillary is the nominee, so the Republicans ought to be asking who can beat her. Right. There are two polls out that talk about it, and they both say the same thing. Guess who beats Hillary? Dr. Carson. Guess who loses to Hillary? Donald Trump, as of today. Hmm. Now, those polls were released last week before the big bomb dropped on Carson, right? right. There were a couple of things that came out that are going to reflect in the new polling this week. Carson's book has now been heavily researched. It happens. He's very popular, and so everybody that's an investigative journalist is digging up his past. There's three stories that people are checking on. The story that he allegedly tried to stab his friend in the belly, and the knife hit the belt, and so that didn't happen. There was the story that he got mad at his mom and tried to bash her head in with a hammer, <laughs> right? Yeah. In his book, he, he talks about it. And then the third thing is the West Point scholarship. On the first two violent episodes, yeah. they went to 10 friends, Dan, from his childhood, and nobody can ascertain whether this really happened. In fact, nobody even knows about the stories. Yeah. Now, does that mean that they didn't happen? Probably not. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not something you brag about. Yeah. They're violent crimes. They're felonies. And you don't go telling everyone. Does it matter much? I don't know. Here's the third thing. He says he was offered a full-ride scholarship to West Point personally by General Westmoreland. Untrue and untrue. First of all, West Point doesn't give scholarships. Everybody goes for free. Yeah. Number two, during the period that he said Westmoreland met with him and offered him the job, Westmoreland's diaries show he wasn't even in Detroit. Mm. Now, is it important? Maybe. Because he was the number one ROTC uh, student in Detroit. Everyone was trying to get him to go to West Point. Everyone said he would get the congressional appointment, which is the only way you can go to West Point. Yeah. So as a young boy, he might have been confused as to which general he met with or not. Now, why is it important? The polls that have come out when they try and analyze why is Carson so far up there, either first or second in every poll, it's because he has the highest favorability ratings and most important, among every candidate in both parties, he's number one on honesty. Not social programs, not defense, not relationships with the Middle East, not immigration, honesty. So what do they hit him on? His honesty. Mm -hmm. Now, are these things going to affect the polling? It's really, really curious because most people say that are supporters of Dr. Carson, why do you like him? I believe him. Yeah. He seems the most honest. If he truly has a chink in that armor, you're going to see some numbers come down. Yeah. That's my take on it. 
But interesting, that same poll uh, said that Donald Trump was one of the least honest people. Absolutely. And you know, but he gets out there and he spews the truth all day long. How can you think that this guy's dishonest when he just says what's on his mind? I would know, say he's the most honest. And you know, and you know who's lower than, than him? Yeah. Hillary Clinton. Oh, wow. So, so you've got the two. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. You've got the two leading candidates yeah. in almost every poll. Well, well, the Hillary's leading dishonest. every poll. Right. Right. Trump is leading every poll but one. Mm -hmm. Um in honesty, both of them aren't doing well. Mm. So it's almost like the so electorate... So do we want manipulators in the Oval it's, Office? It's, is that what it is? Almost, yes. We I, like liars, people who can manipulate? I think we're used to it. I think we're used well, to... Well, we are used I think we're used to it. Politicians use car salesmen. They kind of are fudging all the time. So we're used to it. It's so unique that there's a candidate... Hey, don't slam the used car salesman like that. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take that as an insult. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to be with a politician. I mean, are you kidding? The used car salesmen are up here. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's interesting that you've got a candidate right at the top on a quality that never gets associated with politicians. That is interesting. He's an honest, believable, super high favorability. Look, at 60, 61% of believability, He's crushing everybody else mm. in both parties. Look, the Democrats don't believe Hillary's honest. The Republicans absolutely don't believe, but and yet she leads. So you lead the discussion, Dan, to a perfect question. Does it matter? Yeah. Does it really matter? And you know what I think? My prediction is it won't matter because the politicians that have the best policies or exude the better leadership qualities are the ones that we will vote for. And the man in the street, when you interview him, they can't tell you whose policies are what. They just feel like, well, Trump looks like he'd be a good leader. Or I trust Hillary knows what she's doing because of her experience. All right. We'll see. I think it's going to be really, really interesting in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we tend to vote on broader perceptions as opposed to personal perceptions as opposed to a policy. Right. One other thing that's very curious. I watched NBC live on tape this morning say during SNL, they said to Trump, all the protesters are outside, ha, 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 ha. Now, in my mind, I thought it'd be like a thousand people in the street with signs. Doesn't that sound like you that? You think in New York? Right. Yeah. This morning, in two different news shows, they showed clips from the street. You want to guess how many people were in the street, the massive protests? A handful. Seven. Seven of them. They counted them mm -hmm. on the air. But that's an example of how the media doesn't necessarily report the news, but creates the news. And, mm -hmm. if, and if there hadn't been a crew outside to tape who was there, at least most people like me, oh my gosh, Trump's so controversial, there's a thousand people in the street yeah. protesting his presidency and protesting the fact that he's on SNL. Truth be told, he's going to crush it in the ratings. He's probably right. The show's going to get massive overnights. Mm -hmm. And you know what's really interesting? Mm -hmm. It's the audience he needs. Young people, millennials, 20 to 35, probably watch that show in record numbers. Yeah. And he didn't do a bad job. Yeah. You know, it wasn't of, all that funny. He's not a comedian. No. But well, if you, well, maybe. Naturally, bit, he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> but I think not a, with a script. He's a, not. Well, he's inside of a box written by the writers. That's but true. I thought he did a decent job. Yeah. He didn't embarrass himself. OK, so finally, one more poll I think you wanted to talk about and just quickly. And that is who wins? Who wins as of right now beating the Democratic candidate, the presumptive candidate? I have to say it's got to be Trump. And it's going to be a strong presidential vice president that's going to bring a state with a lot of electoral votes. Mm. Marco that's Rubio? Marco Rubio. Exactly who I'm thinking. Why? He's got the most foreign policy experience. Every single show. He did three shows this morning. His analysis of foreign policy for the United States was spot on. Here's another question on polls. He just released his American Express records this morning. No yeah. one's seen them yet. They're out. If it says the $7,000 that he charged on the card which is the Florida State GOP card, was all paid back, it's a non-issue. If he can't prove that, it's going to follow him. That's going to follow him. All right. Well, it's certainly interesting. You know, every week there's going to be more, and it's going to accelerate, Dan, the closer we get. Everybody's digging into everybody's background. So every week it's going to be the issue of the week, and what would you do two years ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it is the ultimate reality show. And we get to watch it live. And we get to watch every day. Exactly. Well, great to see you. Same here. Have a good one, Barry. Thanks, man. Barry Newsbaum, political consultant and analyst. All right, we're going to take a break, and we will be right back. We'll see you then.
used to call me on the cell phone. Call me on the cell phone.